Yeah, I just uh, spent half my morning trying to figure out who we're playing next and what time we can test at Purdue and when we can shoot. And God, a lot of things changed in this COVID season, guys, gals. But, uh, you know, the best thing is, uh, you know, we had a good practice yesterday. We had to give them Wednesday off because of the days off. And uh, we did have a good practice yesterday. I'm hoping to have a good one today. Uh, you know, I think our guys realize that uh, every opportunity right now is against a quality team, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but it's against real good teams when you look at who we have left on our schedule. And no one more than Iowa, who's, uh, you know, went on a little rough stretch for a while there, too, but um, is arguably one of the best teams in this league. So we're excited to play. We're fairly healthy. I. Uh, you know, I just tried to call Matt Painter because I'm trying to figure out what, uh, how it was for Sasha. You know, he struggled and I don't think he scored a point at Minnesota last night. And, uh, you know, to try to gauge how he feels compared. Now, he hasn't been back as long as, as Josh and uh, especially Gabe, but just trying to gather information to see how everybody else is doing and fighting through this. So, uh, other than that, we're ready to go. Is there any questions for Coach in the chat, beginning with Kyle Austin? Tom, we'll kind of some of your, your shooting numbers, the last Iowa game notwithstanding. Um, what do you kind of attribute that to? Was that guy not taking the shots you wanted? Is there, you know, guys coming off COVID? Uh, you know what? I really have looked at that hard, and we went through all the shots uh, in the last four or five games. and. You know, I tell you, like in Josh's case, a lot of good shots he just missed. But when you go five for 18 or five for 19, I think in one game, um, you know, two or three of those shots I wouldn't have taken, but most of them I would have. Uh, you know, Joey um, hasn't taken as many, but hasn't shot as well. Uh, Gabe hasn't got any shots. He's our best shooter. And, uh, you know, and Rocket struggled a little bit still. But I'd say for the most part, um, it's just been a lack of that practice time and trying to bounce back. And, and uh, you know, we haven't shot it well since then. And, and as I said, some of it's been Josh, but I don't really complain about the shots. It's just that he gets the most shots. So uh, I don't know, at one time, I think in those two games after he came back, he was, you know, 10 for 38 or something. And, that's going to be hard to overcome. So he needs to keep shooting it because they're good shots for the most part. Next up, Matt Charbonneau. Tom, obviously a different defensive opponent this time. Um, Penn State really gets after you. Iowa not so much. Is this kind of a game where you feel like maybe some of those guys that aren't making shots consistently, this is a chance to kind of see some of those shots? I know they went down the last time you played them. Can be, that be something that gets somebody going in a game like this? You know, Matt, they did, some went down, and early they went down a lot. But, you know, later in that game, we had some great looks, and we just missed them then, too. I think, you know, again, wearing down at the end. We didn't have Gabe in that game. And, you know, looking at trying to judge where Josh is and how long it took him to get back. We're trying to work through uh, Gabe. But, you know, the biggest thing when you come off that is shooters, as I saw last night with Purdue, shooters, um, are the ones that, you know, don't get their legs back from COVID because you're, uh, even if you don't have any symptoms, the one symptom everybody seems to have is a weakness. Uh, you know, it takes a while to get back. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know if it's that. I, I really don't. I know we've shot pretty well in practice, uh, but there's a lot difference in shooting well in practice and in getting in game when you're going up and down as much. But I do feel comfortable. I do feel like shots are going to go in. And uh, I just want to, uh, if we shoot the ball well, as good as we've been playing defensively, that would help our defense too. The other area, you know, is a big concern in this game is the fouls. Uh, we have been fouling a little bit, but nothing like the Iowa game, you know, where 35 to 15 difference is hard to overcome, and yet we had a shot to tie with 20 seconds left. But we'll see. I mean, we've got to do, I think, those two things better. We've got to defend without fouling, 
and we got to keep getting good shots. I don't think we're getting as many shots off the break. I think that's hurt us a little bit uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, when we did come back and, you know, we went a lot of days without going up and down because we only had eight guys to practice, and that, that hurt us some too, to be honest. You know, I'm not I'm not playing with as much as you guys think. I mean, I, I can see where you'd be frustrated or people would be. I mean, I did that for a reason. Now, I will tell you this. I'll say publicly the day before, but it, for the most part, I'm not going to answer those kind of questions because I'm not going to give everything away. You know, I don't lie to you, but I am going to start Malik tomorrow if that, you know, but probably for now on, I'll just say, um, you know, we'll see tomorrow. But. I don't really think it matters either because uh, they played almost the same amount of minutes they would have played. Uh, I said that beforehand. I did get, you know, maybe Joey should be the coach because, you know, his suggestion, and we had 21 points and seven or eight rebounds out of that position, and I thought both guys played pretty well. But, uh, you know, there's no secret. Malik is is doing a good job. He brings something a little different. We do need Joey shooting. I've stated that from day one. And uh, I guess we'll continue to state that, knowing that, in my mind, that's going to come back around. And when when we start shooting the ball better, if we can keep defending like we are, that's when we could take some serious steps forward. Up next, Chris Lari. was wondering, you know, it's been usually around this time of the year you get your rotation figured out, you get the minutes figured out, but more importantly, you get the combinations figured out. How difficult has it been trying to maybe mix and match these guys based on the limited practice time and the, the, the lack of, of, of a normal preseason? Well, Chris, that, that is a good question, you know, and I'm sure one that frustrates the airwaves, uh, and I say that only because it frustrates me in my office. You just hit on a couple of really good points, though. You know, in the preseason is when you usually tinker with things. You get the two exhibition games, you get the four or five other games that you feel you can tinker with your lineup and still win. And uh, you also get a, you know, get that summer. And um, we didn't get to do that. So what is frustrating to some, I mean, we did lose some key people. You know, I was even talking to Kyle Arns last night. And, uh, you know, he was a pretty good seventh, eighth man. You know, we just didn't appreciate him as much as maybe we should have. But uh, I still say the COVID part of it and having guys out and not practicing together, I think it leads to more turnovers. I think it leads to different combination. It's been as frustrating for me as probably the people that tweet you or, uh, you know, or, or on the line, uh, on the airwaves. And, uh, but I don't apologize for it because uh, it's not something I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to make it more difficult on one kid or discipline them. In fact, just the opposite. Uh, it's been you know, very strenuous to try to, to do that with a lineup that um, you know, everybody questioned at the beginning who was gonna play the point or center. And so it is what it is, and we're trying to make do what we can do, but I thought your point about you know, the preseason, that's normally where you get it. It's almost like everything's been moved back a month or two, uh, at least for us and, uh, and maybe some other teams, but definitely for us. And would it have been better if I could have stuck with a certain lineup? Some of it I didn't feel I could. Some of it I couldn't because those bodies weren't even there. So uh, there's a lot of good reasons and excuses, but none of those really matter right now. We've, we've got pretty much a full team back. We've had them back for... Uh, Gabe's been back a week. We've had Josh back a, a couple weeks. Um, you know, if there's ever a time when we can start putting it together, it, it is now and later than I would like, later than most people would like, but not of any fault of the players, I promise you that. And it's always fault of the coach. So if it is fault of the coach, uh, this is one time I'll defer to saying, uh, you know what, we're trying to do the best we can do under the circumstances. Later, when it was such an almost emotionally draining game. 
Yeah, as you know, emotions are a big part of the game. And uh, But you can look at it two ways. You know, you can go back and look at tape and say, hey, you know what? If we did a few of these things better, if we didn't maybe foul here or they weren't called there, you know, but the bottom line is they'll be a different team. We'll be a little bit different team, you know, and, and you just hope that uh, the one area that will be is I think our guys know we can play with them. And, uh, and that's important uh, when your confidence has been shaken a little bit. So, uh, you know, we know they're a very good team. They're very well coached. They're probably the best offensive team in the league. And uh, we understand that, but uh, we've been pretty good defensively. It's whether we can get our offense going to, uh, you know, they zoned us a little bit more, and I would welcome that now. I think we're, we'd be more prepared for it, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. We, we rebounded very well there. I think we had 20 offensive rebounds. We did some damn good things. We just uh, couldn't get it quite done. And uh, part of the reason is they're really good, too, and they're really well coached. And Garza's a load. You know, he's a load for everybody. As I said, if you do a hell of a job on him, he gets 22. If you don't, he gets 32. And somewhere in the middle is where he's been most of the time. So I think a lot of people just stress Garza uh, right now, Wise Camp has been shooting the ball maybe better than anybody in this league. He's been on a terror the last three, four games. So you can't, you know, a couple of stats that were interesting, Lindsay, we gave up six three-point plays, not three-point shots, three-point plays where we follow the guy and he, and he gets the bucket. And uh, that can't happen. That's one thing we have to do a better job. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm trying to get those three officials from last year back this year. I was, I'm just kidding. I don't want to get officials mad at me. But, yeah, you know, but, I mean, that's why Xavier's starting in the NBA, too, um, some games. So uh, we, we did look at that, and, and, and believe it or not, Xavier guarded him some, but we used Xavier a lot to double last year because he was so smart and he had such a feel uh, for everything. So he did guard him some. But he didn't guard him the whole game like you think. And, and uh, so we've done a little bit of both, and we've looked at a couple different ways we're going to guard him. But I still say right now I'm as worried about a couple of those other guys. You know, uh, Weiskamp definitely, um, their point guard, he's had 30 points in games. You know, we did a decent job on him. He had nine, and I think he had four for four from the free throw line in the last 20 seconds. So. Uh, we actually held him to four or five points. And uh, if we could hold him and Weisskamp to four or five points like we did the first game, I think our chances of winning are better uh, no matter what Garza does, except if we get in so much foul trouble that, you know, I love my guys. I just don't like them sitting next to me on the bench. You know, we talked about it Wednesday morning. We had a good team meeting right after the uh, Penn State game. Uh, we had an early morning meeting just to talk about all the things. You know, I, I, I never try to talk about the end result. I try to talk about the process. And uh, yet, you know, there is pressure on these guys. I mean, there's so many things going on right now that I uh, just decided to sit down and talk to them. And, kind of tell them what I thought, what we have to do, where we have to get. Don't put pressure on every game, but we do got to win games. And, uh, you know, I feel they handled it pretty well. But, uh, you know, when game time comes, it's always a different way of handling things. But I think in general, um, they're excited right now to get some home games, 
you know, because we went a long time without any, and now we got some home games. I think they're excited to play a real good team that we know has been a top. Hell, I think they were three or four at one point. And, uh, and I think we have uh, a golden opportunity. It just the problem is we're playing a very, very good team that that has we've defended them pretty well in the perimeter, but we don't match up as well inside. And so we're going to throw everybody but the kitchen sink at them. Do it a little differently. Marky got in foul trouble real early. Joey got in foul trouble real early. Uh, I think that had, you know that hurt us too. We didn't turn the ball over that much. It was the fouls uh, that hurt us. So I, I think they'll respond. I really do. Yeah, if I could follow up real quickly there. Is that a sort of a balance of injecting that confidence of look what we did last time, guys, versus knowing everything isn't going to be one-to-one -one translatable, you know? Is that kind of... Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of balance. I'm, ba I'm balancing a lot of things right now, you know? Uh, how hard to push, how hard to hug, how hard to hold, how hard to... You know, to be real with them, how hard to, you know, kind of try to make it rosy in one way, try to make it difficult in another. Um, I've never, never went through something like this, and yet it's been a good learning experience. And as I keep telling them, if they survive it, um, it's going to make them stronger, better, and, and not only this season, maybe next season, maybe the rest of their lives. I mean, uh, we're talking about something that's that nobody's dealt with, uh, with all the things. And... And here at Michigan State, you know, there hasn't been many times we were 10 and 7. Okay, but there hasn't been many times when Duke is 7 and 9 or Kentucky's 5 and 14 or, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a strange time. And all I can do is make sure that we're ready to play and that, uh, you know, they know they have to play at a very high level. I think the hardest thing this year has been to try to understand when you lose a game like Wisconsin or Purdue, our margin for error is a lot slimmer than it's been other years. Part of it is, you know, leadership down the stretch and maybe, you know, great quarterback play. Part of it is, um, you know, a lot of new bodies in there that have to withstand the pressure of where you play and yet uh, are trying to kind of grow their own self as they go. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting, but it's, it's not all been that bad. Uh, I, I, I have learned a lot, and I think my team will learn a lot. And if we can uh, find a way to win a couple games here, it changes everything, you know, just like making shots. If you make more shots, your defense gets better. Uh, it's just the way it is. You're feeling better about yourself. So that's what we're working on, and I, I've said this to you before, and I'll say it again. The practices in that, players have been very good. I don't feel like they're off in left field, and uh, we're just going to keep building on that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we've got time for a couple more. We'll start with Brennan Quinn. Hey, Tom. <laughs> Marcus, um, and there have been times where you mentioned that his minutes are sometimes limited by his endurance or ability to go for extended time, things like that. I, I wonder where you think he is on that. If you take out foul trouble, you know, anything yeah. else that might happen. Yeah. How well, would you feel about playing him, you know, 22, 24? I, I, I think 20... I think 20 minutes a game, Brandon, is uh, is what he could play right now. You know, I, I still think because of his slightness, he has to exert so much more energy against a guy like this. But definitely he's up from the 10, 12 minutes he was early in the year from all the, you know, I say weight he lost over the summer because he was actually lighter when, we, when he came back than he was last year, which doesn't make any sense. But uh, Marcus has taken some steps to improve. You know, it's still... Uh, I wouldn't lie to you, it's frustrating because I think if he took care of the things he needs to take care of, I think he put himself even in a better p position. But at the same time, uh, all we can do is go with what we got now. And uh, he is playing more minutes in practice. He is playing a little more minutes in games. Foul trouble does create a problem once in a while, and he usually gets that when he gets tired. But I think if we could get 18, 20 minutes out of him, um, that would be great, and I think that would help us a lot, too. Was that a picture of you golfing, by the way, or was that? I mean, I, I know my swing does look a lot like Ben Hogan's, but no, that's Ben Hogan. Yeah, it looked like, yeah, Ben somebody. I don't know. I stay on the court. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, you mentioned that you're going to be 
yeah. That's a good thing to stay. Just don't show us pictures of it. It's, uh, my stomach can't take it, but go on. So anyway, I'm hoping, all seriousness, that we can get him more minutes. And, uh, cause I think his length does bother. You know, we've had some success with his length. He blocked a couple shots in the last game uh, down there, but he does have to exert a lot, you know, at his 200, 20 pounds compared to 260 or 70. It's, and, uh, and I'll tell you what, Garza just keeps coming at you. You know, he posts, they throw it out, he reposts. I mean, if you rest a minute, he's going to be underneath the basket. And, and Mark, you keep you keeping up with him in transition and things like this. Uh... You know, I, yeah, he's got to do that because the guy runs funny. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you watch him and you say, how's he getting up and down? You know, they used to say about Magic that, he wasn't that fast, but one step he was at full speed. He, he, you know, that he had the ability to do that. And Garza, you watch him and you say, "Look at this guy run!" But he's always at full speed for him, and uh, I just have a lot of respect for him because of that. You know, I, I, he just keeps on trucking. You know, and when Weiskamp starts playing like he's been playing, and you know, I look at the last game, the last three guys, guys that are playing four minutes a game hurt us. You know, Toussaint had 10 points against us. And uh, Euless had, you know, four points and drew two fouls and got a couple of rebounds. And another kid uh, uh, did the same thing, you know. So it was the guys playing four minutes that, believe it or not, we I don't think we appreciated hurt us. And so Franny plays 10, 11. You know, you talk about playing guys. I mean, I, you know. I asked him after the game, is his wife going to suit up? You know, he's got everybody in there. And those bottom guys hurt us, and they hurt us a lot. So I give him a lot of credit on that. They all kind of know their role, you know, uh, and, and, and play to their role. They know that the ball's going inside first, and they don't deviate from that. And uh, I think that's really helped him uh, um, a lot, to be honest. Mur the Murray kid, too, you know, uh, Nunge hurt us the last game, but he is a really good player. But the Murray kid's a kid that, you know, you don't know that much about. He's going to be a hell of a player before he's done. He's a great offensive rebounder. He's got great length. Um, they got a hell of a team. If they put everything together, uh, they're, they're definitely a Final Four team. Thanks, You're welcome. Well, you know, Rocket's still a guy. I mean, the day's going to come. Joey's going to be making shots. And and Rocket, you know, what we told him the last game is he's got to get back to his defensive tenacity. He has a dog in him, and, I mean, it's a positive dog that he can get after people, and, and that kind of gets his offense going. So one of the things I like about him is down the stretch, when I have Aaron, uh, Josh, and him in there, I think defensively it makes us really good. But offensively, you know, he had the big tip in, you know, he, he finds a way to make winning plays and yet, uh, you know, sometimes struggles in other ways. He's gotten way better. I think he's taking better shots. I actually wish he'd take a few more mid-range shots because he can get in the paint anytime he wants. But he's getting in there and he's finding people and that's been better. And defensively, you know, he's our, our best asset at that position uh, late in games too. So. It's a combination, but as you know, that's been one of the problems. We have one guy that's better offensively, one guy that's better defensively, and one guy that might be a better passer, and we kind of got to get them all together somehow. All right, Coach, that's all the questions we have for you today. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.